Well, leave it up to me to have issues with a car that I buy. I am either the luckiest or the unluckiest person ever. The reason why I say both is obviously when it comes to buying vehicles that have reliability problems, well, yeah, apparently I'm super unlucky because every single thing that I've bought over the last few years seems to have some sort of issue. But then because of what I do for a living, it makes me kind of like the luckiest person ever because at this point, I'm just printing money like the US government because everything I buy breaks and then there's more videos to make. So yeah, I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about what happened to the Grenadier and hopefully this is entertaining for all of you. So here she is in her natural stance with the hood. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but this is my 2024 Ineos Grenadier. I've had this for about a month, maybe a little bit over a month, and it's been problem free until well, yesterday. So yesterday I got in the Grenadier after filling up with some gas and turned it on. And of course I was graced with the gentle warm presence of the check engine light. Now, of course, I instantly assumed that it was something that I did wrong, so I went over to the gas cap area and went, okay, did I not twist this on properly? But I did. So obviously I just, you know, did what I just did now where I took it off and twisted it back on, made sure it was secure and closed the door. And actually, I'll show you guys on the door here, you can see 87 minimum, 91 recommended. And that was the other thing that I thought, hey, maybe I made an oopsie and filled up the wrong gas. But I, of course, checked my receipts because uh, I take pictures of all of my gas receipts. And as always, it said premium. I just always fill up all my cars with premium. I guess that's my uh, flex for today, guys. Yeah, I, I fill up with uh, premium while you guys are using uh, regular. But anyways, I use premium. So I didn't fill up with the wrong fuel and I didn't leave the gas cap off, which obviously could have caused pressure issues, which could have caused the check engine light. And so there was nothing like instantaneously that popped out to me that said, hey, there's something that I potentially did wrong in the last five minutes to cause this check engine light to pop on. And so, of course, after this happened, I did one more thing, which was the engine oil. That's something that you can check. Um, I'm not in level surface right now, so it's not going to let me do it. Um, but you can see level on road, it says okay for that. But I did a check on a level surface and my oil level for on road and off road also fine. So it's not like I'm missing oil and that's causing some sort of engine issue. So like everything that I can kind of diagnose myself with what the vehicle offers and with what I can visually see and hear, it doesn't appear that there's anything wrong with it. Before I talk about the drive of the Grenadier, I do want to mention also no leaks underneath the car. So it's not leaking fluid either, right? It could be, you know, maybe transmission fluid or oil. Again, we checked the oil level, the oil is okay. okay. But maybe it could be leaking some sort of fluid. It's not. So no fluid leaks, no weird sounds. So annoying. I have that as my uh, favorite to turn that off. The some people gave me crap for uh, not putting that in my uh, five things I hate. What the heck? I clicked too many times. There we go. No, that's on the wrong thing. I will say sometimes this infotainment system glitches out. Like I press the favor button and it doesn't pull up the right screen. But also I get impatient. <laughs> it's, so anyways, it sounds normal. And when it comes to driving, you can see it performs normally. Um, I'll, I'll get you guys like an acceleration and it, again like audibly I don't hear anything weird it's not like the engines chugging weird it's not like the gear shifts are clunky like the gear shifts are just as smooth as they always are so it's just kind of a strange check engine light I will give you guys my theory at the end of the video as to what's actually happening with the Grenadier based on my experience with some of the other systems so far, but something that I am noticing is, and it could be, I've got the AC on and it's hot outside. Auto stop starts not doing anything. I don't have it turned off. So I'm wondering if they're, that's, that's one thing that I will say right now. That could be an actual issue is something with the auto stop start system glitched out and that's not functioning anymore because I, I've just noticed, but again, it's also been like right now it's yeah, it's almost 100 degrees. So a car's not really gonna do auto stop start when it's this hot anyways, Because, but I also have the AC running pretty, here. Let's turn off the AC, I'll make myself hot. Just so we can test this out. So 
There should be no reason as to why this car shouldn't do an auto stop start here. It did it. Okay, so auto stop starts functioning as normal. So it's not auto stop start and acceleration feels just as powerful as always. And again, you gear shifts as they should be. It's literally not skipping a beat whatsoever. It is performing completely as it should. So let me just tell you my theory quickly. Uh, instead of, let's, let's keep driving instead of you guys having to look at my uh, ugly face here. <laughs> Here's what I think. What I've noticed with the Grenadier is it is extremely like boy who cried wolf when it's warning lights. I've noticed time and time again that it'll give a warning for like the front sensors not working or warning for the active braking system not working or warning for this or that and it's still functioning properly. So it, it seems like it's like a little bit, like, like I said, boy who cried wolf where it's like, hey, something's wrong and it's not actually wrong. Most cars are the opposite in my experience where something will be wrong and it won't give you a warning light until it's really wrong. Like <laughs> for example, with my Bronco Raptor, when I took it off road, it was acting completely fine until it wasn't. And then the warning lights came on. So that's kind of how most cars function. Whereas it seems like this, again, maybe there is something wrong, but it, it seems like it's the sensors are just overly sensitive, which I can understand for a car that people are going to take out into the middle of nowhere with no ability to service. Like, yeah, it would, it would make sense if something was more sensitive. So it's like, hey, maybe you should pull, pull back. And I guess let's pull up the off-road. The reason I want to pull this up here is I want you guys to see the temperatures. Everything's green. Like, again, everything is like the temperatures are at normal operating. Nothing's, nothing's like actually acting weird at all. So I think it's just a boy who cried wolf light. And I guess that I do see that as a slight problem for the Grenadier. Um, and the reason why I see this like, like I see the benefit right of being overly cautious But I see the problem of then, you know owners like myself are just going to Become so accustomed to lights popping on that when there is actually a problem with the car again boy He'll cry wolf. We're gonna be like, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's fine It's just it's just one of those lights and then the and then the engines gonna explode <laughs> I'm being a, a little bit dramatic But yeah, I, I think that maybe I, again, it's a new car from a new company, so I'm going to give them a little bit of little bit of grace. And I haven't taken it into the dealership yet, so I don't know, you know. Well, I'll have them diagnose it, and I'll, I'll give you guys an update with that, so we don't know exactly what's happening here. But I, I think it's just they were overly cautious with this. I think they're overly cautious, and maybe they should kind of tone things down, just like this over speed warning, right? Over overly cautious with the over speed warning, tone things down a little bit with <laughs> with that as well. So. Let me know you guys think about the situation. Um, let me know what you do if you're in my situation uh, with like, like the whole thing where it's like every single car I buy seems to have problems. Because again, no, I I did I did the uh, smart thing, right? I bought a, a Toyota Land Cruiser, right? And we had issues with that too. So it's like, it's not like I'm only buying, you know, quote unquote, unreliable cars from unreliable brands. It's like, I tried the safe route. I went with, I went with a Toyota and even that had issues. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know what to do at this point, but I'm not going to give up on the Grenadier because unlike the other cars that like they had a light pop up and there was actually an issue, Bronco Raptor, the battery died. There was actually um, some disconnect with the wire harnessing in the Land Cruiser with the airbag. Like the Defender, it lost its power steering several times. So it's like those had actual issues. This on the other hand, I don't know. It doesn't scare me as much because Maybe, maybe it should, but it doesn't scare me as much because the car is still functioning normal. Like I can still drive it. It's not like it's dead in my garage or, you know, so I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't concern me as much. So I'm going to go into the grocery store and <laughs> you guys start commenting away with what you think about this Grenadier situation. And I'll give you guys an update once I get it into the dealership and have them check it out. I, I'm willing to bet that it's just literally going to be a computer flash. They're going to be like, yep, nothing's wrong. We reset the computer and you can go home. That's my guess.